It's a comedy Christmas with me, Alex Belfield, talking to the big stars of comedy, and it's always nice to meet legends. And I've got two of them in front of me. Janet, how are you? Hello, I'm fine. I'm fan Dabby Dozy. <laughs> and well, Ian? I'm, I'm very well, thank you. You're a legend. Am I? I'm, I'm, it's only a short leg end, though. <laughs> <laughs> and they are, of course, the Crankies, two of our most popular and two of our most famous comedians of all time. Uh, in the summer, they went out and did a variety tour. Um, what was it like being back out with great acts in front of audiences that were lucky and, and happy enough to see you? Well, it was fantastic. Uh, we played to capacity business, the, ev- well, just Most about everywhere. Places, yeah. A couple of the big concert halls with maybe a few empty seats, but apart from that, every theatre sold out and the laughs. It was three hours of laughter and also six hours of laughter backstage, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah three great. hours before we went on and three hours you know, <laughs> during the stage show. It was great. Um, What's it like being with a team? Because obviously in Panto you have a team, but normally com- comedy people go out by themselves. Yeah. It's a very lonely, depressing life, actually. Yeah, well, that's what was nice about it. It was good company, but the only thing was I said to Tommy Cannon, I said, it's a good job of not getting a tour bus because you and I would have to have therapy at the end of it <laughs> because it was like, you know, Frank never stopped and Jimmy Cricket and, and, and Paul Daniels doing tricks all the time. So it was, it was, it was funny, you know, it was, but we had a super time. Really good. And thank God this tour was put on because we've been desperately seeking a show like this for a long time. And it's great to see the kids coming back to shows like this to see what proper entertainers actually do. Yeah, uh, I don't. We don't get many kids no. in really. But the, the concert halls we get more than we do in the theatres. Maybe because they're used to going to concert halls rather than theatres. You know, to see things. It's a start, I think, of a, of quite a regular thing. The best of British variety is going to go out next year. The best of British variety number two and then number three. So with a bit of luck, we'll it'll come back this way you know and show people as you say that there's such a thing other things other than singers and cooks (laughs) (laughs) and gardeners Um, too many cooks spoiled the TV. TV. <laughs> <laughs> and, and for you, is it fun being together? I think that's so nice because I interview all the top comedians and I just think it's a bit sad really going from hotel to hotel by yourself, leaving oh, your partners yeah. at home. You're really lucky that you're together. Uh, but maybe that's a downside. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're all right. We've been together. Well, we've been married in next October. We've been married for 40 years and really we're 24 hours together a, 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 a day so it really makes it as if we've been married 80 years right. well you're thinking it doesn't it <laughs> but I know what you mean I mean Stu Francis our best mate uh, uh, he says you know it's it's perfect something's really awful miserable when you're driving home after a gig and you maybe haven't done that well it's been some awful club and you've got that all that way before you can speak to somebody yeah. and say ah <laughs> and it gets a bit lonely for Stu doesn't it uh, yeah, yeah. well no because no, it goes well most oh, of the no, time oh no I don't mean that it's uh, but, Ooh, but, like but, it, great. but the same is when they've done well yeah, really, yeah. they come off and drive home they, they don't get the accolade with anybody either and also aside from that if you're bombing on stage you've got somebody else to get through yes. and look at each other and Think, oh well, laugh and get off. Yeah. Just take a Mickey. Yeah. Say, what's well, because that, that's what we'll do. We'll just do the act ourselves if you ever start bombing. Yeah, <laughs> but the thing is, you don't. You only. You only don't do well when the facilities are wrong. Uh, you, I mean, you're the, talking about having camps again. <laughs> 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 well, if, if the facilities are right yeah. and and you've got you've got a, an act that suits the, the thing, then you're fine. Let's try and test. You know, the only thing years. I hate, I hate what I don't work floors. You know, c- cabaret rooms with floors and no stages because they think I'm on the wireless. So I, you know, I just think, no, I'm not. I'm not doing that. And even some of the cruise liners, you know, if they've not proper stages, if it's dance floors, there's no point in me working it when well, you're four. People at the back think I'm talking to myself. <laughs> <laughs> Who's he talking to? And I suppose by your your experience and by your time of life, it's not as if you don't know what works. I mean, you might try a new yeah. gag, but the, yeah. the the act is there, really, isn't it? Well, we we've changed now, really, for this type of show that we did in the, the Best of British. Um, Jimmy Cranky is not a crackerjack. Jimmy Cranky, it's Jimmy Cranky, um, letting everybody know that he's got his bus pass and pensioner and and um, it's that's the funniest well, thing about it hum- it's a more adult approach yeah not blue humour but more adult approach whereas of course in Bantam which we're in uh, at Christmas times uh, is silly billy time isn't it's, it well it's gonna, you could do the same stuff as you did 28 years ago in Panto and it was I mean not that we do because I'm doing with Amy Winehouse this year and uh, <laughs> I'm doing a spoof on, it, on her um, instead of rehab I'm doing kebab and uh, <laughs> I'll grow, 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 you know, <laughs> eating too many kebabs, so I'll grow, grow, grow. So that, that's something, and you've, you've just got to keep up to date with what, for the children, of what's what's in vogue then, but you can, you can do the same... The same slapstick, same slapstick can go.
You know? I have a lot of rounds with bosses about getting people like you on and about the jokes I do on air. They say it's old fashioned. What they don't understand is funny is funny. Oh. And and actually comedy's timeless, isn't it? Yes. It's time is it's timeless if your timing's good. Yeah. If your timing's rotten that you can be as funny as you like, but you'll never get a laugh with it if it's not the right there, there timing. Are old, uh, there are old styles. Mm. You could say, Well he works a bit of style. But as you say, Jeanette, if that timing is right, it's funny, you know. Uh I think modern the modern comedy has more aggression to it than our comedy all had, and maybe a bit more vulgarity in the language. But of course, what we find strange today is the politically correct side of it is what they blame us a lot of not having. It's taken more seriously by the alternative comic not to do, but it doesn't seem to bother about the language. And when we were at their age, the main thing was you were out that door if you swore in television and radio, not allowed to utter even the word bum, were we? Yeah, the, the, this the age group that we're getting in for breast the British variety, they don't mind not if it's politically correct or not. They they would be more insulted if we kept swearing, you know. Yeah. Which I think I think it's good because it's you know. I mean, I do gags about Gordon Brown, and we do gags about. Uh, our togetherness and all the bit and everything and they, they love all that you Dressed know that was a wee boy married Dressed to up, me yeah, married to him, you know, some know. people say oh, but it's, fun, it's mm. funny I also find it funny when people like Ricky Gervais do racist gags ironically which get laughs yeah. but he's not doing them because he's ironic actually he's still doing the gags yeah. and they're still laughing at the yeah, same yeah. thing yeah, yeah. 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 That, it's exactly oh there's somebody Hello. at my door Oh, it's Mr. Cannon. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone. I don't think he likes me. I interviewed him only a few weeks ago, so it's probably me. Uh, yes, uh, um, the ironic thing of that is Little Britain broke every rule in the book, but covered it by saying, ah, but it's characters, it's not us. Yeah. We're portraying the ridiculous, but they weren't. They yeah, were just doing what we all did. Yeah, but it was, it was funny. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm not saying it's not funny, but that's how they got around the political correctness. Do you ever stop learning when you're a comedian? I mean, there are new gags all the time. Normally, a same old gag, just with a different story around it. Um, There's only five gags they reckon, you know? Everything is a, a, a cut-off of the five gags. But I don't know what those five gags no, are. we'll never find that out. Because <laughs> you're only a feed. I'm the one that knows the jokes. I have to tell you the jokes, Jimmy. So I you know, learn them. I just, I just make them up and insult you. <laughs> And as for the guys you've worked with over the years, you've worked with all the legends. Yeah. Who's impressed you the most? Who do you think is the funniest, naturally funniest you've ever worked Come with? Now we're gone. Both. Cooper's the funniest. Natural, natural a visual comic, I think, ever we worked with. Yeah, wasn't we he? worked with him in Cabaret. When, when a man walks on the stage in Leicester in a nightclub at 12 o'clock at night and he doesn't come on for, what, two minutes and the whole audience is in convulsions, just what he's saying in the dark. That's a comic. It was hysterical. Yeah. Uh, cleverest comic we've worked with Bidby Monkhouse. Oh, I never yeah. found Bob very um, warm on television, but live he was very well, very mm. great. I mean, I, clever I, brain. I, 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 I couldn't sit through Ken Dodd for three hours. I couldn't. It, it would. I just don't. You know, I like I like gags, but I don't like that fire and stuff. You know, that gag, 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 gag. But then, I you mean, like, there's, there's loads of people love them, and there's, you know. You, you, what would you say? I suppose the nicest people work with be French and Saunders. You. Well, I, we are, I mean, I like I like their sort of humour, but then again, that's that's a woman and it, like woman's humour. See, the Kendall thing's interesting because you look at him and he's still doing theatres week after week after week. It's yeah. funny how he seems to have survived and still has it. Do you think it was because of the mystique around him with his Diddy Man and all of that? Why do you think he's still... Well, he, he, he reborn himself it, after attacks. What, what happened was the British public took sympathy with him and th remember, oh, that poor, go and see him. And, of course, when they got in, he was good enough, obviously, to keep them and really make them laugh. And they said, do you know, we forgot how good this guy is, and it's just built and built on that. But, yeah. as you say, it's not your particular company, but you don't like gag merchants, do you? No, I don't really. Like no. comics, like, like Bobby and Tommy, who, and I suppose I said, who do business. It's just a continuation of a conversation between two people that gets out of hand. And that's what, of course... All the double gate doubles were, I suppose, Mark and Wise was the same. It was a ridiculous situation you were laughing at. And can you ever give this up? I think if you're the kind of person that likes the attention of a round of applause and a laugh, it's very uh, hard to walk away from it, isn't it? Yeah, you can give it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, why haven't you then? Because well, I like it. I mean, I do like it, but I don't like doing it all the time. I mean, I, w I wouldn't work 52 weeks of the year. I'm quite happy doing Panto, doing a little tour, and going to wait to Australia and riding my bike up the Pacific and playing a game of golf. And as soon as people stop laughing at you, then I would stop. 
I wouldn't be one for, you know. I, right. I'm quite, I'm quite happy going to Sainsburys and driving my mini and things like that as well. So. And what's yeah. that feeling like, Ian, when you stand in front of an audience and you think you've got the best gag you've ever written, and it doesn't get anything, and you realise you've finished and they're not laughing? Oh, well, he doesn't do well, gags. She, she, she just turned around and said, "If she did that, I told you that wouldn't work." <laughs> and get her gag back. And if she did the gag and it didn't laugh, she would say to me. What did you tell me to do that for? Uh-huh. And you, so she'd get the laugh. But Ian, Ian's very... He, he sort of thinks things up and then I, I get them into my head and do them my way, you know? So we don't we don't sit and write a joke and say, well, that word's got to be there and that's got to be there. You you, you go with the audience. But you would try it three times before you threw it out if you thought it was any good. If you didn't get laughed the first time, slightly you. Second time, maybe still you. Third time, it's crap. Get a gag out. <laughs> so you all two are quite crafty then because you can't lose because your ad-libs will always save you from anything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. Because they're and not it, laughing at the joke, they're laughing at the people. And, and if, if, if Ian fluffs it, it's great. I love it when he fluffs lines and everything because it's... You can just take... line. You can just take <laughs> the mickey up. The other night I was doing a thing about the Wizard of Oz and things or something and I, 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 I said the scarecrow and then I went the penguin... And the lion. Uh-huh. Ian said, "Was it the penguin?" The, I, I said, the penguin oh, that, 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 was, that was Batman the <laughs> movie. Oh, that was Batman the movie <laughs> story. I got a laugh. I got the Tin Man mixed <laughs> up with the penguin. You know. Isn't that annoying though? That the bits you don't rehearse get bigger laughs than the bits you do. Oh, yeah. oh that's no, brilliant. No, that's brilliant. That's, <laughs> that's, that's the best. The unwritten bit. bits are the best. Well, thank you for talking to us today. You're two comedy legends, and it's really nice talking to you. Good luck with all the future, because you're massively successful. Let's plug the panto where you are now. Yes, we're at Wolverhampton for the second year in Peter Pan. And we're playing the Smees. How about that? Not Smee, the Smees. Uh, Dean and Jimmy Smee. And we're with Paul (laughs) Nicholas, so it's nice. Thank you very much for talking to me. The Crank is on a comedy Christmas. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas. Bye.